And welcome to the Klaus and Q Show here on ONTV. We certainly appreciate you tuning in here tonight. I'm Jason Klaus, and joining me, as always, my tag team partner in this particular endeavor, the one and only Quad L. Edwards. Q, it's great to see you, brother. Man, I, I mean, you can't miss you. I, I mean, know. You are on full display here yeah. on, this, on this episode. Very bright, very colorful. <laughs> you make me happy. Just by the aura that you bring in there, I've got to tell you, your Hulkamania yellow shirt is spot on in, yes, my, in my view. Yeah, I'm glad to brighten up your day. Absolutely. Man. <laughs> Absolutely. How's things? You know what? I can't complain, man. Things are going great. Uh, life is good. I'm still alive. I'm still here. You know, things happen, but I am still here. You know, the one thing, you know, generally speaking, when you greet somebody for the first time in a day, especially people that you know on a regular basis or you correspond with on a, on a, regu on a regular basis, hey, how's things going? Or how are you? What's right. happening? I always say, I woke up today. Yep. Everything else is cream cheese, right? Yeah. I mean, that you, you got to start there. If you don't start there, then there's other questions that come into play. Um, but before we tackle... Uh, tonight's topic. Let's kind of revisit, re recapture a little bit. Uh, last month here on the show, we did something completely out of the box in terms of what our presentation here is. And uh, man, like we've done some cool shows yeah. over the course of our time here on ONTV, but I don't think I've gotten more positive feedback for any one episode than we did for our WrestleMania prediction show. Uh, we had two very good friends of ours on, on the show. We were on a completely different set, and it was just a different vibe. It was very well received. Um, having gone and, and done that, we watched the show. Your overall opinion, r real quick, how was WrestleMania for you? You know, I thought it was great. It was a really good show, especially night one was on fire, yeah. man. And uh, if you go back and li listen to my picks, Man, I got them. All, I think I got them all wrong, man. I, but uh, overall, that show was excellent. I mean, we seen, man. We, even the, I mean, I mean, the surprises weren't really up to par. I mean, it was those, you know, was some issues. But sure. overall, I think it was an excellent show. I feel like it was, it was the show that they needed to have. Yeah, for sure. They they really did pull out all the stops. Maybe not. A lot of those holy crap moments that you have been associated with WrestleMania in years past, but the matches that were—I mean, even the matches I didn't have a whole lot of expectations for—wound up being way better, you yeah. know, exceeded my expectations. Yeah. Um, a couple of them maybe didn't live up to what I was hoping for. I used Seth Rollins and Logan Paul as an example. Like mm -hmm. I thought that match was going to steal the show. Um, again, it was a good match, make no mistake about it, but it just, it, it didn't click on, yeah. on every didn't way. It didn't steal the show. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, but the big debate here that we had while we were talking about it, it was what was the match that was going to close out night one? Was it going to be the SmackDown women's title match because it involved the winner of the Royal Rumble? Or was it going to be, where were they going to go with the storytelling aspect and what centered around the tag team championship with right. the bloodline? and uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin, uh, Kevin Owens. I'm glad they went the route they did. They Me closed too. out with, with the Tag Team Championship match. I felt like that was the perfect way to end that particular night. Yes. Uh, new champions crowned, ended the Usos' historic reign as champions. Yeah. Um, and then the following night too, you, we knew what the main event was gonna be that night, and I, I am very proud to say that Roman Reigns <laughs> is still at the head of the table yes, and still is. the undisputed Universal Champion. So uh, overall, the overall grade, I gave WrestleMania 39 uh, a B plus okay. overall. Okay, I, I would do, uh, I would say a B. Yeah. I would say a B. A, uh, a plus night one, mm -hmm. but then I'll say probably like a C on a night two. And it started right out of the gate, right? Yeah. With Lesnar and Omos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better than I expected. Nobody really wanted to see the match. I right. mean, we all picture Brock fighting somebody that's more prominent. You know, Bobby Lashley wasn't even on the show. Right. Um, and you still had their story that really didn't close. But, uh, you know, the match ended up a lot better than I thought it was going to be. It was short. Yeah. This was great. Yep. Uh, I don't want to see Omos in there for 30 minutes. Right. Putting on a clinic because it doesn't <laughs> work. It's not going to work that way. You know, he's not that guy, you know. And, and Brock isn't really even 
uh, a 30 minute wrestler, you know, so mm -hmm. it, it, it was a lot better than I thought. Yeah, for sure. Um, it was a great night and it's, it's going to come back down to can they follow it up with backlash coming up here very shortly? Uh, they're going to be in San Juan, Puerto Rico for that yeah. show, which is kind of a, 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 a unique it's setting. Different. And, and yeah, it is different. <laughs> and you're seeing them really um, expand the pay-per-views into international waters, right? Yeah. I, I take the Saudi Arabia shows out of the equation, but like Backlash has been an, an established brand. And for them to go, and I realize Puerto Rico is not really a international but it's not the continental united states right you know and it's not canada right um right. so it, it's going to be different and it's going to see can they follow up because i mean they dropped the ball with uh, with the raw after mania oh my god big time yes, listen did. we can sit here yes, and, and talk for hours about this stuff we yeah. do have a topic here tonight and it's one it was your pick this month q and um you know you you're <laughs> i described this to somebody who hadn't really watched the show a lot. They're like, what is the dynamic here? And I'm like, well, there's there's good cop, bad cop, right? There's the yin to the yang. Like, mm -hmm. my good friend Claudel here is the epitome of positivity. I mean, my God, look at how bright he is this week. Very bright. Like, that is a metaphor for his aura overall. I am more of the in-your-face, more aggressive type because... <laughs> I, that's just how I am, you know. So we complement each other very well, but we do have the same basic fundamentals right, on right. the radar of how we mm -hmm. conduct our lives. We may not, we may not be traveling on the exact same road, but we're going parallel, right? right? Yep. I mean, we 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 have the same intentions, we have the same goals, we have the same types of goals, I should say. Yes. Um, like we are very driven, we are very motivated, and we are very passionate about the things that mean something to us, whether it be, you know, the people in our lives or the goals that, that we are embarking on, things that we want to achieve in, in, our, in our personal lives. Um, you and that's kind of what connected us, right? Because yeah. it, it, you know, even before, like I, we knew that we were wrestling fans, and that kind of laid a starting point. Right. But once yep. we got to really know each other and talk yeah. to each other, it's like, man, this is a guy that has the same mindset, and it's a few and far between, if, I, I feel like, because everybody's so worried about everything that's going wrong, nobody really stops to look at what's happening right. Because, I mean, with any given day, there is something in your day, whether you want to focus on it or not, that is a beacon of positivity. It is something to hang your hat on. It is something to keep you going. And especially in days when you've got a whole lot of other ne negative influences happening, it'd be real easy to sit there and let that be the dominant dictator for your day. But we don't conduct ourselves like that. We right, kind of right. use that energy because it is energy. And we could let that, you know, drag us down and, and just beat the snot out, out of us because that's what life wants to happen. Yep. We don't do that. So you come to the table this week with maximizing your potential. And granted, if you've listened to the show, if you've watched the show, if you've listened to the, the various podcasts on the PFC Entertainment Network, this is a reoccurring theme. However, there are different ways to tackle this kind of topic. Because what we may have talked about previously didn't click or it didn't register to you personally, but it did to somebody else. So realizing that this is one of those topics that is subjective in, in, a, in a lot of ways, we tried to you know, figure out ways to kind of tackle it in a different way that may register and you can take what we're talking about and apply it to your everyday because yep. Man, Q, we can go up and down the line. We can look at our lives. We can think about the people that we correspond with on mm -hmm. a regular basis. And we want the people that we care about to be the best versions of themselves. Yep. And in order to do that, a number of things have, have, to, have to take place. Some of them are easy. Some of them are hard. Mm -hmm. You are somebody that epitomizes 
maximizing your potential. Another way that I say this is uh, maximizing your minutes. Um, that's that's kind of a catchphrase that I had adopted. I, I had heard it elsewhere, and I kind of kind of adopted it into the podcast. When I'm talking about, yeah, you got, you got to yeah. maximize your minutes, but Absolutely. it's it's not just that concentrated amount of time. It is the potential overall. Yeah. What inspired this month's topic? Man, you you pretty much said it, man. You you, you really hit it, hit hit the nail on the head there. Um, you know, for me. And it, it, it's crazy because as I go through life and I see people around me and uh, I realize that people are not maximizing their potential or even their minutes because those minutes are minutes that we never see again. Mm -hmm. Like one thing, if you really analyze how important the minutes are, oh my God, man. And, and it's crazy because like potential pretty much means untapped power. Like you, you, you got something powerful right here to impact the earth and you have the power to maximize it. You'll really make an impact in somebody else's life. Like, we impact each other. Yeah. We impact each other. Now, to qualify it, uh, I'm not Jason Klaus, and just like you said, you're not Quadell Edwards, because we already have that. You know, I, I, I'm not producing myself in somebody else, but I'm gonna produce my traits, my qualities into somebody else, therefore, you know, and I know you'd pretty much do the same thing just by speaking to people. And, and that really helps people to maximize their potential because you're surrounded by positivity. You know, and it's easy to just let life drag you down because life hit me hard. I mean, no matter how positive I seem, no matter how bright my shirt is, there's been, I've been hit. <laughs> I've been hit. I mean, I can sit here and look like Kofi Kingston or, 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 or the New Day, uh, Big E, I can sit here and look like those positive guys, but behind the scenes, there's things that happen in each and every one of our lives that we can easily go in a whole different direction. So maximizing your potential is something that you have to choose to do. It has to be intentional. That's it right there. It is, without a shadow of a doubt, a matter of choice. It's a matter of personal choice. And this is where I, I have this thing where I talk about the one, I, I, almost, I almost went into podcast mode, <laughs> the one person you are not going to fool is yourself, okay? You, you, can, you can try to um, shape a narrative or, for the lack of better terms, you can try to BS everybody into believing one thing, but the one person you will never, ever outsmart is yourself because somewhere in your brain even if you think that you have swallowed that or put that to the side burner or whatever that it's no longer going to be a thing i got news for you you're you are terribly wrong you are terribly yeah. mistaken and i'll tell you how i know this and i'll tell you how you know this somewhere either in the back of your mind or in the pit of your stomach there is going to be that little that little twing, you know, like mm -hmm. some, there's some sort of uneasiness, some sort of turmoil. What that is, is the realization that there are some things that you tried to BS yourself about and it didn't work because it, it is a reminder that you have unfinished business. Now what happens is, and this is when I started, when I, because everybody has their own personal journey right, to, yep. to get to where they want to be or to embark on a goal that they are wholeheartedly invested in. Um, because what I do, you may not agree with, and vice versa. Right. Just because we come from different backgrounds, we have different experiences, we have different people in our immediate circle that can oftentimes dictate or at least have some sort of, a, of an influence on what they bring to our lives. Now, what I find, and I'll, t I'll tag you in on this too, is I find that when you are trying, like making a really concentrated effort to maximize your potential or to take a step forward on this goal that you have set forth, this is where you start realizing who is truly in your corner, who is truly in, in your inner circle with the best of intentions, and they're not there as some sort of 
in some sort of surveillance. Right, right. Like they're watching you yeah. do the work and they're going to pick up on what you're mm -hmm. doing and try to apply it and try to leapfrog yeah. themselves over you. Have you encountered things uh, like this? Man, I, I call that the entourage. Yeah. Because you know, they're sitting there waiting in the wings, you know, uh, they, they'll hang on to your coattails. And uh, once you find some success, you know, you might find something that, uh, that will benefit them as well. They will try to jump in and just take, 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 take after you did the work, work, work. And it's, uh, you know, you, 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 gotta, you gotta discover who you are. You really gotta discover who you are because that's how you're gonna discover if you have the right circle. Um, for me, um, when you, I think about comparisons. Now, if I take my uh, key ring, which may have three keys on it, give it to you, and you give me your keys that has 30 keys on it, I'm not going to know how to use those keys, but guess what? You don't know how to use my keys. Right. We all have our own journey. Therefore, even if I try to leapfrog you, there's, I, don't have, I don't have that knowledge to actually succeed in that. Right, because they no longer have, have that, that blueprint, right? right. They, they don't have yep. that example. Okay, well, I've seen this person do this, so I see what works or what doesn't work. Yep. They don't have that. They leapfrog that and all this. What a great analogy because that's exactly it. They're so focused on what somebody else is doing, they don't have a fundamental understanding as to why they're even on this journey mm -hmm. anymore. They just know that something cool is coming out of this. They want to be a part of it. Not only be a part of it, they want to be the flag bearer. Yeah. They want to be the one that crosses yeah. the, the finish line first. But you don't know what line you're crossing. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's a very good aspect that I did not take into consideration. I sat here, as, as you proposed the, this topic earlier this week, I was sitting here thinking, okay, what's going to be my approach with this? And I think about my journey and I think about, okay, what, am, what have I done to this point to maximize my potential? The, first, the very first thing is I've got to realize that I did, I, I should not say it this way, I am worth more than yeah. where I'm at, yeah. okay? When, yeah. you, when you can not let it go to your head and not form a sense of entitlement, but if you look at your here and now, and there's something that is not firing on all cylinders. If there is something that is lacking, you know, you know somewhere in the back of your mind that you're not happy. Right. You know, right. life right now is not uh, what we call all sunshine and rainbows. Even with my shirt. Even with your shirt. <laughs> it doesn't matter how. <laughs> I tried to just go right through that and I blew it. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Look, if it's live, it can't go wrong, right? <laughs> um, but <laughs> on track here, you you've got you've got to come to the the uh, the, the realization that you're worth more. Right. You have right. potential. Yeah. You you have a lot of people have listened to naysayers for so long that they have allowed that to dictate. Yes. Their mindset, their entire mindset. How many times have we talked about here on the podcast? It starts with a mindset. If mm -hmm. you are not of the right mindset, you are only going to get so far. Right, you right. are only going to be able to, to achieve so much success before you eventually hit a wall. And you, it's up to you. It's up to you. It's up to you to make the choices. And this is what separates the people who, who talk about it mm -hmm. and the people who actually do it. We can sit here until we're blue in the face, as blue as my shirt, and be, <laughs> like, <laughs> and be like, okay, you know, I want this, I want this, I want that. Sweet. What are you doing about it? You know, sitting here and, yep. I mean, you can sit here for only so long, you know, so, so much time and be like, Okay, I'm formulating a plan. They'll, 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 they'll ask, what are you doing? Well, I'm coming up with my plan. Mm -hmm. You can write all the plans in, you know, in the whole notebook and be like, okay, now what? <laughs> right. right. So you, your journey, you have goals. You have dreams that you are actively and aggressively working towards. My approach is different from your approach. So I feel like... One of the universal things here, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is 
that inner circle that we have talked about mm -hmm. and getting the naysayers out. Yep. Now yep. we have touched on this before, but it bears repeating. How important is it to um, weed the flower beds as it were? Right, yeah. Very important, I mean, that's, that's vital. I mean, like you, you, you think about what you're feeding your brain. I always think, I always say, uh, okay, I, I can't eat a Big Mac for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for five years straight and actually say, well, I'm a, I'm a healthy guy. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> when, when, when uh, we sit here around these people who are feeding us garbage and all this negative stuff, like all this stuff that don't even mean anything in our minds, our mind is, our mind is being corrupted. You're yep. sitting here allowing this thing to happen because you, you have a choice to put a stop to it. You have, to, you have a choice to distance yourself. And it's, it's, it's deep because it can even be family. It can even be family. It can be people close to you. And they, it's like wolf, like a wolf in sheep clothing, you know, yep. just sitting there just preying on all of the stuff that you're trying to do. And they're over there talking, saying, nah, you can't do this. You know, why don't you do it this way? Uh, why don't, why don't? And they have no knowledge on what you're doing. Right. Uh, but, but they are quick to speak. They're quick to speak and say, you can't do it. Um, I mean, we can, we can sit here and quote Obama all we want, say, yes, I can. But until you get all those people out the way, you're, you might not do it. Right. You're, <laughs> you're only going to go so far. You're going to be influenced by negative people. You, you said that, and it, it kind of it, it conjured a thought of, like, you are at the center here, and there is, like this, there is a circle of people. If all of that is negative, you're, you know, that negativity for whatever reason and this is the part that pisses me off more than anything in this day and age with society is the the energy that materializes from negativity is way more powerful and held in higher regard than anything positive and i want to know why I want to know why we live yeah. in a society that begs and screams and cries for change, yet nobody does anything about it. They, because that, that the fundamental force of negativity is a stronger force. Yeah. But is it really? The answer is no. The answer is it is what you make of it. If you f tend to focus on the power that negative influences have, you are going to, by and large, be a very negative person. And a very negative person is only going to go so far in life. That is fact. You can argue with me until the cows come home. You will not change my mind in this because it comes back down to mindset. Yep. You know what I'm saying, Q? Like, we... Yep. What do we have to do to shift that that mm, the 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 continuum for the lack of better word? Yeah. What can we do to take the power that is that that fundamental force of negativity and refocus it on positivity? What is it that people are waiting for to realize that this is a viable option and that it's not some sort of something that you find in a Disney? fairy tale story right right it's uh it, it, you pretty much touched on it earlier it's actually putting action to the paper you know um neg negativity is very popular and that's uh that that's just the land we live in and it sucks but uh negativity is very popular people love controversy people yeah. love uh, uh putting people down it's it's the popular thing to do and you want to fit into the crowd but uh the best way to put it is change has to start within you now don't sit here and say you know i want to change this or that that for the better but you're not putting the change into yourself first and you have to actually pretty much duplicate that change that you put in yourself and actually put it out there on the airways like I, and, and i think about okay i put a lot of uh inspirational quotes on uh facebook every day now if i were to put something negative on there I guarantee you I can double the likes. Yeah. I can double the likes. People start sharing like, oh, look what Q said. Oh, man, that's controversial. I don't know. It's, Q ain't being itself. 
and people will spread that like wildfire on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you put something positive out there, people are like, okay, well, you just say something positive again. But the change has to start within yourself. So if even if I impact you by something that I said, allow that to resonate in your 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 uh, spirit. You know, let that let why, why don't you create change within yourself? Like, and it's crazy because I see a lot of people on Facebook saying, oh man, it's I don't understand why they're fighting in the schools, or I don't understand why they're doing this or that, but yet they're doing the same thing. So it's 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 almost like the world is very hypocritical, mm -hmm. you know, and we highlight everything that is negative because that's 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 where the spotlight is. It's a shame, and you wonder, you know, because I mean, you and I have had conversations about this. Brian Balf, who was on here last month with us, he and I have had conversations. Like I've had this kind of conversation with a variety of different people because I like to get other people's points of view, their opinions. Um, Q and Brian, you know, they, they're not the same. Um, other people that I have corresponded with along with this, they don't have the same upbringings that Q and Brian do and vice versa. So it's, it's good to get a variety of different points of view. To, you know, where, where does this come from from you and what is the common trait? Clickbait. Yep. Everybody is so concerned about going viral or having their name known or having some degree of notoriety or being popular on in some way, shape, yep. or form on some realm that they will literally do anything and everything to get their names in other people's mouths. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great and everything, but are you doing it for the right reason? Number two and number or number one and number two, do you actually believe in the garbage that you are portraying yourself in in a public realm? Because if you're not, you have compromised your fundamental being. And when you don't have a grasp on who you are fundamentally, you don't have a foundation to stand on. So anything that you do achieve is really on borrowed time. Oh, yeah. You have a loner, for the lack of a better term. Yeah. You don't have anything permanent because you have no foundation to, to, to grow upon. Now, what we're going to do here, we're going to run a quick time out here in a moment or two. And then when we come back for the second half of the show, uh, we'll, we'll dive into different things that you can do to truly maximize your potential. But before we get there, I want to make mention real quick. You'll notice I'm wearing blue this month. Um, that is because this is my recognition of Autism Awareness Month, which April is. And like I know a lot of people who have kids or, or in some way or another affiliated or affected by the challenges that come with, um, with autism. And it is a very important cause. You know, where we work has, has a big annual campaign every year to raise money and awareness for um, the, the Autism Research uh, Resource and Research Center, S Support and Resource Center yeah. in Burton. I, I, it took me a minute. <laughs> it's a long name, uh, but phenom phenomenal people that work over there. And um, we just want, wanted to take a moment here and just recognize that April is Autism Awareness Month, and we truly celebrate anybody and everybody that um, that that deal with the challenges that come with this. Um, not just in the month of April, but every single day of every single year. Anything you you want to add to this before we we run the commercial real quick? Good cause, good cause. Just support, uh, and you know, it's uh, we do have the. Uh, campaign that we do at our job uh, you know just support it you know put the awareness out you know because I, I, I know people that are dealing with this so yeah. yeah yeah for sure all right with that let's run a quick time out and we will be back with more of the Klaus and Q show live on ON TV right after this
runners and walkers of all ages are invited to come out to the 2023 Dragon Dash 5K on Sunday, May 21st. Check-in opens at 7.30 a.m. with the race starting promptly at 9 a.m. The Dragon Dash begins and ends at the Orient Center with participants heading out on the scenic Pollyann Trail toward Civic Center Park and back again. All participants will receive a medal as they cross the finish line. For more information, call 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com. Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. And welcome back. <laughs> welcome back to the Klaus and Q <laughs> Show. Your theatrics are just on point here this week. Uh, we are live here on ONTV. I'm Jason Klaus along with Claudel Edwards. We're talking about maximizing your potential this month. And, uh, you know, we kind of laid the groundwork for a lot of the influences and a lot of the factors that can come into play here in, in terms of what either motivates us or, or detours us from truly maximizing your potential. You've heard me say a thousand times across all the platforms here, either on ONTV or the PFC Network, uh, it's, you know, we get one shot at this thing we call life. Regardless of what you believe, regardless of what you worship, re reg regardless of all that, the fact of the matter is, in this form, in this state, um, you get one shot at this. So what are you going to do with it? A lot of people feel like, Q, like, I, like, I don't even know what, because I, I, there is just some aspects of the human psyche I fundamentally just... I cannot get a grasp <laughs> on. And a lot of that revolves around the individuals who just will do absolutely nothing to try to improve their situation. And they have almost you know, condemned themselves mm -hmm. to a life of misery, uneasiness, turmoil, controversy, drama, heartbreak, and all the other ill feelings under the sun. Why do you want to live your life like that? Now, I know there have been aspects in my life, and I know this is why I am the way I am now. I, I was in some pretty, pretty dark places in my day. And like I've done and said stupid stuff over the course of my day. Um, but at the time, you know, you don't look at it like that, right? Right, right. Is there one moment for you where you were at a particular point in your life and you realized even though for whatever reason this is the way things were you knew this was not who you wanted to, you know wanted to be and you, something had to change was there one moment that was kind of like it, fl it flipped the, the script for you heck yeah <laughs> man uh you can go back to uh the 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 maybe the late maybe the mid to late 2000s, man, I was, I was jacked up, man. I was jacked up, I, I had issues. Um, I had trust issues, I had rejection issues, I had all kind of issues, man. Um, and it, man, I had an epiphany like years ago, you know, it was right before I moved to Kansas. I said, man, something has got to change. And I, and, and I knew, um, somewhat of a direction that I needed to be going in, but I didn't know exactly who I was supposed to be at the time. So I just knew that I had to, to kind of like get onto a positive path before I could discover who I'm supposed to be. So man, that journey actually took me all the way to Kansas, man, and I, and I had issues in Kansas because what I did was I tried to run from an issue, but I took the issue with me because the issue was right here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had, an addiction issue uh, with alcohol, bad, man, bad. I'm talking about 
and, and getting behind the wheel, you know, doing this kind of stuff. So I knew that something had to change. I knew that something had to change because I knew I wasn't raised that way because, you know, the, 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 the home that I was raised in was a fairly positive home that was pretty much surrounded by negative negativity. So I can, e I can either take the, the, um, the foundation that my mom put in place or I can listen to the neighborhood, you know, and, and go that route. So at first I listened to the neighborhood. Uh, man, I took the neighborhood to heart. I, I was partying, having a good time, not being who I was meant to be. I mean, the potential was there, but man, I was not trying to tap into nothing. Right. But uh, actually, uh, further on down the line, you know, um, pretty much right before I left Kansas, something started to kind of like click in me that, okay, well, if I'm seeing all of this other negative stuff around me that I don't like, why am I harvesting the negativity within myself. So that's when I started making changes. And, uh, and, and I'm gonna tell you, it's not gonna be an overnight thing. You might, it, it, it might take you years to get your mind right. And I'm telling you, it took me years to get my mind right because I had to do a detox, man. I had to uh, not only detox my body, but detox my brain. And all of this stuff was leading to health issues and I mean, when I start walking that right path, I start like seeing stuff. I start seeing like, okay, maybe this is where I'm supposed to go. This, maybe this is who I'm supposed to be. And uh, lo and behold, you know, years and years on end, you know, being here back in Michigan, growing up and meeting my wife and, and getting ki having kids, you know, adopting kids. And, you know, uh, I started to really discover who I was, but you know, what kind of kept me from fully embracing it was fear. Yeah. And one and, and that's my advice to anybody out there that's dealing with something, do not fear being who you are supposed to be. And I know there's people and and I I've, I've actually spoken to people that said they want to pretty much do what you do. And the reason why they don't do it is because of fear. And they they're like, "Well, I don't like the way I sound, you know." I'm gonna tell you about that. I don't like the way I sound. Right. I feel like I sound like Barry White talking. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wanna you don't wanna hear Barry White talk, you wanna hear him sing. So y'all probably sitting there waiting for me to sing. No, that's not <laughs> <laughs> to this day, a lot of times I don't even go back and listen to myself. No. So sometimes you just gotta pass the fear. <clears throat> just lay it down and say, you know what, I'm gonna just get rid of this fear and go. Because life is about risk. You're going to take a risk regardless. And I always tell people when I'm training them, I say, choose your heart. Your finding who you are is going to be a hard path. But guess what? If you don't do it, it's going to be a hard path. So which heart are you going to choose? Because one heart actually gives you a benefit right. of living life the way you're supposed to live it. The other heart is going to lead to more hard, you know, more hardship. You know, so I always tell people just go. Sometimes you got to get up and go. And for me, I'm a, I'm a morning person. Uh, I wake up in the morning and I can easily just lay there. But I roll out of the bed because I want to get my day started. And that's how we got to do in life. Roll up out of that bed and do what you are meant to do. I mean, it's, it can be, it's going to be hard, but do it. I guarantee you, you're not going to look back. Have you ever... Um I got to think, I, I have to be sensitive about how I word this. Um, fear, the fear aspect, that is, that is what keeps a lot of people from maximizing their, their potential. That what if, yep. those two dreaded words, uh, what yeah. if, what if. What if I don't make it? What, yeah, right. what if <laughs> I fail? What if you succeed? What if you didn't give yourself an opportunity, a chance, a fighting chance to get what you want? Because people who do know what they want, but they're not in the circumstance or the situation that's going to manifest that. Yep. They don't or can't. They, they will use the word can't. I can't do this. Yep. I can't improve my situation. I can't escape this bowl of negativity. I can't, can't, can't. Can't is either you won't or you don't know how. Yep. If you don't know how, chances are pretty good that there are aspects that 
will teach you. Won't is a personal choice. How bad do you want it? How much is it worth it to you? Because we can sit here and, you know, even in the most dire of situations, there is a solution. It may not always be the easiest. More often than not, it's not. It's not going to be easy. Because anything worth having is worth fighting for. Yep. Anything worth having is worth putting in the hours, the effort, then all of the mental and physical strain that it will eventually take on you. But the more resistance that you meet, it's because you are getting closer to where you're supposed to be. And there is another entity, more often than not, a negative one that's doing its damnest to keep you from, from crossing that particular finish line or the end of, the, of that particular chapter. Because it doesn't have to end when you cross that line. Right. It's, it's very much a chapter. And that's the other thing, Q. People look at everything as a whole. Yeah. It, it's like from point A to point B. They forget that there's 26 letters in the yeah. alphabet, right? Yeah. yeah. How important is this? Oh, uh, that's real important because when you look at it as a whole, I guarantee you, you're going to skip steps. Yep. You're going to mix them up. I mean, you're going to have people go from A to G, back to B. And then, I mean, you're, you're just sitting there mixing and trying to mix and match. It's not going to work. You have to lay it down. And I say always write, always write it down. I mean, those goals and stuff, always write that stuff down and put it in your face all the time. Like, I put my goals on my phone, on my front page. So when I open it up, I see what I'm supposed to do. Because easily, that mind of ours can easily just say, you know what, you don't remember nothing. Right. You know, so we have to be intentional on this thing, man. I, and and. I use that word a lot is being intentional <sighs> because life is about choices and choices shape your life. I mean, when you're born, you look like your parents. When you die, you look like your choices. Mm. You look like the choices you made in life. And that plays a big role. What you choose today, do you choose to succeed? Do you choose to get out of the bed? Do you choose to, to, to go full force, put that thing in segments, put that thing in chapters, say, I'm gonna complete this chapter by this date, and do it, Right. do it, you know? Don't just write down stuff and, and leave it, you know, and it started to collect dust, and you don't even know what you, you don't even remember what you wrote. That, that used to be me. I mean, I used to, because I've always been a writer. I mean, from my teenage days, I used to always write things down that I want to do this, 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 this. And then I go back and look at that journal and be like, man, I don't even remember writing this. So this, this is how a lot of people are living life forgetful, you know. That fear pretty much drove them away from the journal. That fear pretty much drove them away from being who they are meant to be. And it's so easy to make that decision to quit. Quitting is a very yes, easy yeah. decision to make. Yep. Because you see the long road, but you see an exit. Oh, man, it's easy to put that blinker on and take that exit. It's easy to do that. That's even if you turn the blinker on. <laughs> so, sometimes you may be in the fast lane here and you just about face. Right That's there. right. Yeah. Boom, you're going across four, <laughs> four lanes of highway to get off. And, like, if you can do it unscathed uh -huh. without bashing into another car, you, you're lucky. But yeah. chances are, if you're doing something like that, there's damage along the way oh, as yeah. you make that exit. Yep. It's usually somebody yep. else that had no part of the equation exactly. to begin with. Yep, you're harming people. That's it. Yep. You know, not just yourself. Now you now you've affected other people. Here's the thing. I kind of feel like I'm going to get fired up about this. There's ways that you can. Um, there's things that you can do right now, right this second, even as you're watching us, that you can maximize your potential number one you got to get good with you you got you have to have a basic understanding and you need to come to peace with who the hell you are that's where it starts then you get into the mindset of yes you are worth something more if there is an entity or an influence that is dictating your life mm -hmm. in a less than favorable way not just your life but those 
that mean the most to you as well. Yep, yep, because right. your actions, whether you realize it or not, could and oftentimes will have a residual effect on everybody that you have regular correspondence with or at bare minimum, people who mean something to you, okay? If there are dominating negative influences, whether it be a situation or a person or a scenario, the bottom line is it has to be cut out. Because essentially what's happened is you have allowed those influences to now become the role of puppet master. Yep. You are the puppet. You are allowing the puppet master to, to dictate who and what you're going to be, of where you're going to be, of every aspect of your being is being controlled by this proverbial puppet master. It is solely up to you because you are of free will. You are yeah. not just made out of wood and string. You are a human being. Mm -hmm. You are capable of doing things that you probably don't even know you have the potential to do because, again, you've not tapped into it. All right. You have not accepted the roles for what they truly are and what they are right at this second. If something is holding you back, they are the puppet master. Now, this is where you have a, a choice to make because... You can either just be okay with the fact that you are being played like a puppet, or you can grab the first sharp object that, that comes across your radar and cut the, cut the strings off and execute your own plan based on what you want. Yeah, yeah. Tap into your Pinocchio. <laughs> okay? It. Yeah. That was probably the <laughs> dumbest thing I've ever said on this show. Tap into your Pinocchio. <laughs> Hashtag that one. <laughs> oh, man, but don't lie. You know, don't, don't, don't lie because, you know, that, that's the thing with Pinocchio. So. <laughs> right, right. Don't lie to yourself. Uh, but, yeah, you have to tap into to, uh, who you were meant to be. Take, take those, cut those strings, man. Cut ties with those people who are playing you. And, uh, that's not an easy thing to do. No. I know because you you may have people from, I mean, childhood. And just because they're childhood friends or whatever don't mean that they're the best thing for you. Everybody can't go with you on your journey. Everybody cannot go with you on your journey. But actually seeing the uh, a circle develop, you know, in a positive way, that's going to show you who is meant to be there for that journey and 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 like the way that we came across each other like you mentioned earlier that was like crazy mm -hmm. you know that was crazy because all all i knew is okay he he watched wrestling that's cool you know i watch wrestling he watched wrestling but the fact that something went a lot deeper after being a guest on that show um on on a klaus to the heart show uh was what two years ago yeah uh <laughs> Crazy Man. to think about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that opened the door. I mean, that opened a door right there saying that, okay, this guy is positive. I'm positive. There's something, there's something that we can feed off of each other without ruining each other. You know, right. so it's something that we do that we help build each other up. We're not using each other. We're, we're pretty much building each other up. I support everything that he does. He supports everything that I, I do. And uh, that's how you can really realize if that circle is for you. And you don't gotta have no big circle. You don't have to go around looking like P. Diddy with an entourage and, and you got all these people around you. All them, you, don't, you probably don't even know all their names. And that's the thing, we, 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 we like to travel in these big groups and we wanna take our friends with us on the journey. Your friend might not be ready for that journey. Right. Your friend might have their own journey. Yep. So it's, sometimes separation is key not easy to separate but separation is key has to be and and especially when you when you come to the realization that these people or these influences are indeed the the anchor around the ankle as yeah. to why you're not moving anywhere yep. you've got to get away from it and i realize you know because the common argument is 
you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know how tough it is. You don't know. No, I don't. I'm not in your shoes. I'm not. I'm not looking at things through your eyes. All right. I understand that. But I also understand the fact that look, you're you're looking at a guy. You're looking at a man that completely changed his entire life within a, a, a concentrated amount of time. Do you think that was easy? Absolutely not. <laughs> That was the hardest thing I've ever had to do, but it was the most necessary thing that I had to do because I realized at that time that there were different aspects in my life that was not, I was not a good person. I was not a happy individual. I felt like I was wasting my time here. Mm -hmm. And it takes one, maybe two life altering events that make things come into crystal clear focus that things have to change. Does Will you be perceived as being selfish? To some, yes. To those who don't understand, yes. You will be public enemy number one. You will be the devil. You will be every bad thing that's ever been correlated onto another human being because you took, uh, you took time to focus on yourself. You have to. You have to take time to Focus on yourself, because if you're not good with yourself, you're not going to be good for anybody else, especially the ones that mean the most to you. So, yeah, you're going to have to make, make some tough choices, and you're going to have to weather the storm. Yeah. Because when people start seeing that other people are going to do things, sometimes unconventional, mm -hmm. sometimes controversial, in order to be the best versions of yourselves, of course, they're going to have every opinion under the sun, and they feel compelled to let everybody else and you know what their feelings are, even though at the end of the day, they're not walking in your shoes. They're not looking at things through your eyes, and they sure as hell don't feel with your heart. Okay, so if you're so worried about what those kind of people are going to bring to the table in terms of some sort of um, rebuttal or response to what you're doing, that, my friends, are the first people you need to eliminate from your life or at least from your inner circle. I'm not, you don't necessarily have to banish them oh, yeah. from, from existence. But you don't have to let them be a part of that crucial inner circle that drives you when you feel like you cannot take another step. Right. Kind of kind of like what, what Q was just talking about. I support him. He knows I support him. He knows if he's ever in a rut and he thinks I can help him in some way, I am a phone call away. Same thing. Vice versa. There's two guys in, in, in the control room right now that very much fit in in. In that in in that role too, because they're behind the scenes making this thing happen live right now. Yeah. Because they're supporting us, and we support them in what they're doing. So positivity can and is really, if we focus, our, you know, on that, the most powerful force in the world. We just need to incorporate that into everyday situations and push the negativity and the people that facilitate it to the sidelines, to the back burner, because that is where they deserve to be. Agreed. I'm out of breath. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, uh, one thing about um, being who you are meant to be, it's not only about you. You know, you're going you're gonna to impact somebody. So it's... It, there, there, there may be a time where you're on this journey by yourself. You may, you may find you know yourself having those lonely nights. You know those nights where you just, it's just like overwhelming to you. You might, you might cry a little bit, but you know, there's the the, the benefit is, it's not just about you. I'm gonna tell you, if I fail, if I fail, then I'm failing a lot of people that's around me. There's a lot of people that's connected to me that that listen to the words that I say that 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 actually enlist me to help them in different aspects of life uh, because I'm, I'm I'm pretty much a life coach you know I, I I deal with fitness I deal with nutrition and I help people in that area and if I were to fail then a lot of people that are connected to me will they'll, they're gonna fall off so right. this is where you have to maximize yourself not only for you. And, and, and I have kids, you know, my kids are following me. They're watching me do things. And, 
and they, they, they call me the strongest man in the world. You know, if I, if I fail, then how will they view me? And how it, will it impact them in life? You know, so there's, there's different aspects to this, man. You have to make it, you know. <laughs> you have to make it because if you don't, man, it's, 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 it's a sad case. I'm going I'm to say the richest place the richest place in the world is the grave. So much untapped potential is in the grave because they didn't maximize their potential. They lived the American dream, somebody's American dream, and died without maximizing books unwritten in the grave. So much loss is in the grave. It's the richest place in the world never thought of it like that but you are absolutely right and i i can't think of a better way to put a bow on on this topic for for this month um like it comes back down to this you know if, if we if we had to summarize it you get one shot at life man what are you going to do with it what are you going to do with this time that that you got so uh, as, as we wrap it up here this week, I want to say thank you to my good friend Claudel Edwards and uh, Joe and Sean are kind of running the ship uh, in the control room. We certainly appreciate them. Uh, and real quick, these are my shameless plugs. Uh, next Friday night, April the 28th, we uh, power tripping through the, well, we're going into the 90s right. for this one. Um, live karaoke and costume party. Uh, podcast recording with Sean Grugel and myself. Uh, very much looking forward to that. If you were part of the 80s uh, party that we had a number of weeks back, <laughs> uh, we, we kind of broke the mold at the Backroads Bar and Grill there in Holly, but it was, uh, it was a good time to be had. We're going back next Friday. And then a week after that, Sunday, May the 7th, I am going back on stage for a one-man motivational stage show. Backroads is going to be the venue for this as well. It's kind of become our home away from yeah. home. You know, between that and ONTV Studios, like, we, we have the right people in the right place right yeah. now. And, like, this network, the PFC network, I mean, in, in correlation with ONTV, like there's a lot of cool things in the works there's a lot of cool things happening like our our expansion is very much on display and it's really starting to take shape you know you're you're going to be a part of this thing you you are a crucial part of this entire network and i appreciate you to no end i'm sure you know that but but without you without the the viewers the fans the listeners None of this would be possible, and we, we just want to say thank you very, very much. So tune in to our social media accounts. Look for the Klaus and Q Show on Facebook or PFC Entertainment Network uh, for everything under our umbrella. All the podcasts, live events, ONTV shows, the whole nine yards. So for Claude L. Edwards, I'm Jason Klaus. Go out, be awesome to yourselves and to each other, and we'll see you right back here next month with the next installment of the Klaus and Q Show, live on Orion Neighborhood Television.